So I'm going to show you guys a really cool new widget by Arduino Manager. It's called iBeacon. It allows you to interact with uh, iBeacons, your iOS device, and uh, your favorite open source uh, microcontrollers, uh, you know, Galileo, Arduino, all those kinds of fun things. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and use my iOS device in Arduino Manager and an iBeacon to go ahead and trigger my garage door to open when I come in to the driveway and then for it to you know, close automatically and then open when I want to leave. Okay, so a quick overview of what's happening here is we have an iBeacon here and an iOS device here. Now the iBeacon go, broadcasts a signal that is interpreted by the iOS device as the signal volume and we can sort of approximate the uh, distance between these two um, devices. I think a better way to look at this is really in you know regions. So how the actual uh, I, I Beacons widget is set up is we have four different regions. Uh, right now through Arduino Manager. So we have the immediate, near, far, and then out of range. So the first step is to get the iBeacon and the iOS device to read these four regions here. The next step is going to be implementing the actual control method, which will use Wi-Fi as a communication method for this case, but you can also use 3G or Bluetooth. So once the iOS device uh, detects that it's in a region, it will send this information back through Wi-Fi. And in this example, I simply am going through the Ethernet shield, so I have to go through a wi wireless router and then go to the Ethernet shield. And then the Arduino is acting as the uh, control uh, microprocessor and then going into the control unit and then the garage door motor activates that way. The very, very, very first step is to get these four regions to be read properly through the iOS device through Arduino Manager. And I'm gonna show you how to do that now with a second iOS device acting as the iBeacon itself. Okay, let's go ahead and set up the iBeacon first. To do this, go ahead and download the application Beacon TX. That's a Beacon TX. This up. For the name, let's just type garage. For the UUID, let's do eight zeros followed by three sets of four zeros. And the last set, 12 zeros. The major and minor, just zero, zero. You also have the option to type, put in your own UUID, but since you have to Put this exact, the, all, you know, the name, UUID, major, minor values all have to be the exact same for the Arduino manager. Yeah, I just uh, keep it, you know, nice and simple by just, you know, making them all zeros. So go ahead and open up the Arduino manager. Type in eight zeros here, followed by three sets of four zeros. Oops, not five. There you go. One, two, three, four. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Perfect. And then garage. And then OK. OK. Click OK. OK, now we want to go ahead and take the Arduino Manager iOS device. Leave the iBeacon iOS device on. And you'll notice that we have an immediate And then we have a near. And then we have far. And you'll see that we have question mark, which means it's out of range. Okay, excellent. Now that we have the iOS and iBeacon devices communicating with each other, let's get into the nitty gritty and get into the actual controller uh, scheme. So you'll see here that we've actually simplified it even further. So we just have one region, and all we care about is if the iOS device actually enters the region 
um, enters or exits. And then that's going to be communicated down to the Ethernet shield through the uh, wireless router. And then the Arduino will not fire a motor, but it will fire a speaker and an LED so that you guys can see and hear it a lot easier. All right, let's make sure that the hardware is set up correctly. So plug in that Ethernet shield, make sure it works. Um, LEDs or whatever actuator is plugged into pin 8, and we're good to go on the hardware portion. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the Arduino Manager portion. Uh, go ahead and restore the code generator purchase. It's an NAC purchase. And click on the button that looks like this. And we're going to go ahead and set up the parameters necessary to generate the uh, code. Just that simple. Type in what you know. Hit this button and you'll see a preview of the code. And then you can hit this button here. And that will show you the actual IP address that you will type in to your browser as so. And this is where your code will be displayed right there. You just click and you copy and paste that into a new sketch and you are good to go. Now we're going to need to make some modifications. Um, so bear with me here. There's going to be a six, I believe, total. So we first need to define the actual pen that will control the um, actuator. So this is going to be pen eight. And then the next thing that we need to define is the actual time that it stays on. And I chose a pretty long time, it's going to be like four seconds. Okay, the next thing is we're going to need to change the uh, MAC address. Now, I think that I just made this, this one up and it just happens to work because, um, you know, it's a small network at my house so that works for me. But yours should be, you know, printed on the side of the box that, you know, you got it in. So just whatever your MAC address is, just, just go ahead and plug it in there and you're good to go. Okay, now we need to modify the setup portion of the code. We need to specify that the pin mode is going to be an output for pin 8. Okay, and just some, we'll put some exclamation points here, just for fun. Okay, now we need to actually specify what happens when you are inside the region. So we will write a simple if else statement. Yeah, that's how you spell exiting. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> just just carry on.
and we need to specify the identical action for when you actually push the uh, the push button. It's exactly the same for when you're entering and, and exiting uh, the region just like we have above. So just go ahead and put that. Okay, we'll go ahead and finish this off uh, with just a little serial print note to make sure that we know that this was triggered manually and not by the iBeacon itself. Okay, that's it. Go ahead and upload the code into your Arduino. Go back into Arduino Manager, configure the connection, hit connect, and you're good to go. All right, so we're ready to uh, start this thing right now. Go ahead and put everything together and test it. All right, so you see I've added another trigger and I'll put you right down here and then I'll see you guys later. All right, great result. That's exactly what we're looking for. And as you can tell by the video there, I've had a had a few other really good results there. So what I can tell you is that this is a, a this is a pretty consistent, pretty reliable method, but it is certainly not flawless. It will get hung up going in and out of the region if you do it too fast, too quickly. So you've got to want to kind of give it some time to respond. All right, with that in mind, that concludes our part one of the iBeacon tutorial. Coming up on part two, I'm going to show you a new method to communicate with the uh, microprocessors. And I'm also going to finish up those pesky details and get this project wrapped up for you guys.